Do you know what the stars are, White Oak? We were sitting on the doorstep of my house, number 40, looking up at the clear night sky. Eh? Lewis looked at me, then looked back at the sky. The stars, you know. You know what they are? Well, I don't know. Rock and stuff, I suppose. You know, mud and that. Mr. Evans, up school, said a star is a dead body. That's daft, said Sloggs. If it was a dead body, you wouldn't be able to see it from down here. It's too far away. Perhaps there's lots of dead bodies all mashed up together like, said Bobby, who was whittling on a piece of wood. Perhaps there's, you know, hundreds of dead bodies all smashed up and lying on top of each other. Well, that's daft. Where'd they all come from? Well, from down here, because they're dead. Perhaps that's what happens to people when they die. Sloggs looked at me, looked at Lewis, looked back at the sky, and kicked a tin can down the street, unable to answer the irrefutable logic of Bobby's thesis. Yeah. Bobby, taking advantage of the lack of alternative theories, started developing his theme. You know, when you think of it, well, that's why there are hundreds of, you know, stars like. Because when you think of all the people who have died, like, since the old world started, like, you know, there's... There's hundreds and hundreds, and if they all lied on top of each other, you know, their dead bodies like, it would take up all the room in the sky, so they got to split up when they get to hundred bodies or something, and that's why there are so many stars. The immensity of the argument silenced us. Bobby continued whittling his wood. Me and Lewis sat on the step in silence, and Sloggs took another kick at the tin can and said, Anyhow. Who wants to go camping? Haven't got a tent. I have. My dad got one on house clearance. Slog's father had a second-hand shop at the end of Belgravia Street. He said I could have it. He said it's like new. How many can sleep in it? asked Lewis. Stacks. It's probably an army tent or something. Where shall we camp? Travailer. Nah. Foxwoods? Nah. Let's go Prussia Cove, said Bobby. Yeah! Bobby whittled his wood. Me and Lewis looked at the stars. Sloggs gave the tin can another kick and said, Are we going to get there? Well, let's walk, said Lewis. Guess on with the is miles, said Sloggs. We could hitchhike, I suggested. Nah. You never get a car going along Resurgeon Road. And anyway, Dirty Dick might pick us up and then it would take us ages to get there because he'd want us in the back. We'd have some money off them, though, said Sloggs. Yeah, said Bobby, but we don't want no money because we're going to be living wild for weeks. We're going to be eating potatoes and carrots and cabbages and that and, and killing rabbits and mackerel and things. I don't like cabbage, said Sloggs. I don't like mackerel. I joined in. Bobby looked pensive. My ma says you got to boil mackerel in cold water. That's daft, said Sloggs. How can you boil something in cold water? Dunno, but that's what my ma does. How long we going for? I asked. Weeks, said Bobby, maybe months. We could live there for years and nobody would know where we were and we wouldn't have to go to school or nothing. Money would come in handy if we wanted chips, though, and if we wanted to come into town and go pictures and that. Slogs liked going to the films. Let's get out there first, said Lewis. I vote we go by bus. It's only about a tanner or something, and I got tenpence on me now. I got a tanner, I said. I haven't got nothing, said Bobby. Slogs guiltily admitted, I got two bob. Slogs always had more money than the rest of us and he was usually willing to share it because he wasn't really in the gang, and was anxious to secure his position. Right, that's it, said Lewis. 
we all get some food and that and plates and things and then we catch the bus to that place where you turn down to Prussia Cove and then we walk to a field just above Betsy's Cove and we camp there. How do you know all that? I asked him. Dunno. Just do. Our conversation was interrupted by the arrival of my mother back from her whist drive at the Women's British Legion. Hello, boys. Come on, you better clear off the step before Mr. White comes home, cause you know how he goes on about you cluttering up the step. My mother and father had come down to Cornwall from Wales on a holiday in the 1930s and had forgotten to go back. She was smiling, and I could smell her scent of Californian poppies. Can I go camping tomorrow, ma? Well, I don't know. Where are you going? Prussia Cove. It's not far, and Louie and Bobby and Slogs are going. Can I go, ma? Eh, can I? Well, how are you going to get there? By bus. How much is the fare? I looked at Lewis. About one and three, I think. All right, then. Look, dipping into her purse. Here's one and six, but don't tell your father I gave it to you. You know how he goes on. Oh, thanks, ma. Now, come on, it's time for your bed. It's gone ten. All right, ma. I'll be in in a minute. My mother opened the door and went inside, leaving the front door open. I looked at the boys. Yeah, one and six. Anyhow, said Slogs, I'm going home now. I'll see you tomorrow. See ya. He walked away up from us, up the hill towards Rosine Road. We watched him until he got to the top of the street. Hey, Slogs! Here! shouted Bobby, waving his hand to indicate Slogs should come back. We waited until he came back to us. What? Just wanted to know how far you would have got if I didn't call you back! <laughs> the three of us collapsed laughing. Bastard! I knew you was going to do that. Well, what you come back for then? said Bobby. Yeah, see you, Slogs, I said, feeling sorry for him. See you tomorrow. Don't forget the tent and, and food and plates and that. See you, Slogs. See you, Slogs, said Lewis. See you, Louis. See you, Slogs. See you, Bobby. See you, Slogs. See you, white -o. We watched him until he got to the top of the street. Hey, Slogs. What? Here. Piss off, said Slogs, and disappeared around the corner. I'm going in now, said Lewis. See you, Dave. See you, Bob. Yes, yeah, see you, Louie. See you, White-O. Yes, yeah, see you, Bob. See you, Lou. I waited until Lewis reached his house. Hey, Lou. Yeah? Here. Bugger off, said Lewis. And we went to bed. The next day we went camping. But that's another story.